RF frequency synthesizers are widely used in electronics and radio frequency design. Although there are several types of RF frequency synthesizer, in this video we'll look at one of the main types, the digital phase lock loop or PLL synthesizer. Sometimes it's also called an indirect digital synthesizer because it uses phase lock loop technology and the output signal is generated indirectly from the reference. Digital PLL frequency synthesizers are used in a huge number of applications, broadcast radios, radios for communications, and all sorts of radios, as well as in signal generators, other items of test equipment, and many more electronic and communications circuits and equipment. As the phase lock loop is at the heart of these circuits, we'll take a quick look at the way PLLs work, and then develop this on to see how the technology can be used to create a frequency synthesizer. The concept of a phase lock loop is based around the fact that the phase of two signals can be compared. When this phase comparison is viewed, it can be seen that if it's changing, there is a frequency difference between the two signals. Frequency, by its very definition, corresponds to a change in phase. However, when the phase difference is steady, in other words, it's not changing, the frequency of the two signals is exactly the same. An electronic circuit can be set up so that the signals from a voltage-controlled oscillator and a stable oscillator such as a crystal oscillator are fed into a phase detector. It can be seen that the output will be proportional to the phase difference between the two signals. The output from the phase detector is effectively an error voltage and if this is fed back in the right sense to the control terminal of the VCO it will act to pull the VCO frequency towards that of the reference. Eventually a point will be reached where the error voltage is steady and this means there is a constant phase difference between the reference oscillator frequency and that of the VCO. In turn, this means that the reference oscillator and the VCO are on exactly the same frequency and the loop is in lock. The last block in the circuit to mention is the filter. This is placed between the phase detector and the VCO control terminal. It's a really essential part of the loop and it provides many functions, including filtering out unwanted elements of the reference frequency signal, controlling the phase noise characteristics of the loop, and being a major element in determining the loop stability and its agility. To summarise, we've seen that the loop fights to reduce the phase difference seen at the inputs to the phase detector, changing the frequency of the VCO so that the phase difference reduces to a constant level where the VCO is running on exactly the same frequency as the phase comparison frequency, which in this case is the same as that of the reference oscillator. Let's move on a stage and take a look to see what happens if we add a digital frequency divider into the loop. These dividers are digital circuits that take in a waveform and divide the input frequency by a certain number. Here we see what happens with a divide by 3 circuit, but they can divide by any number within reason, and they can be fixed or even programmable. These dividers are added to the loop between the VCO and the phase detector, dividing the frequency of the VCO signal down. First, let's take the example where the divider divides by 2. For the loop to be in lock, the phase error between the two signals entering the phase detector must be constant. In other words, the frequency at the two phase detector inputs is the same. For this to occur, the VCO must be running at twice that of the phase comparison frequency, and hence twice that of the reference oscillator. Now let's see what happens if the divider has a division ratio of 3. Again, the loop will effectively aim to make the frequency at the two inputs to the phase detector the same. For this to be true, the VCO must be operating at three times the phase comparison frequency. So we can see that by changing the division ratio, the VCO can be made to run at different multiples of the phase comparison frequency. The step frequency is equal to that of the phase comparison frequency. If this frequency divider is made to be programmable, then it can be controlled by a processor or some form of digital circuit, and the frequency of the synthesizer can be changed as required. Normally the reference oscillator will be crystal controlled so that it's very stable. Typically it may run at a frequency of say 1 MHz or 5 MHz. For most radio communication systems though where a synthesizer will be used, a much smaller step size is needed. To achieve this, a fixed frequency divider can be placed between the reference oscillator and the phase detector. 
In this way, the phase comparison frequency can be reduced to the required step increment, while also keeping the crystal oscillator running on a frequency where good performance can be achieved. For example, using a 1 MHz reference oscillator, a fixed divider with a division ratio of 80 can be used to reduce the phase comparison frequency, and hence the step size to 12.5 kHz, as this is 1 MHz divided by 80. It's then possible to use a programmable divider with a division ratio that extends from 11,520 to 11,680 to enable the VCO to run between 144 and 146 MHz. And this is the basic principle of the digital PLL or phased lock loop frequency synthesizer. For more information, please head over to the description and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video, please. Thank you.